Hi guys, Justin here, G0KSC of Innova Antennas and uh, G0KSC.co.uk. So on my G0KSC site you can find lots of my very early work and older designs and some of that as a result will conflict with what you see on these channel pages now. Um, as an education has built up over the last 15 years, um, poo-pooing some of that. Uh, my business, Innova Antennas, is uh, manufacturing antennas for ham radio and all sorts of uh, commercial applications as well. Now, what I'm doing on YouTube is my intent and my goal is to break down some of the more complex topics uh, into practical explanations. And uh, in so doing, my approach is really prioritizing the explanations over the technical physics in order that anyone at any level can perhaps understand better some of the um, more complex topics around ham radio in particular antennas and balans. Now in more previous weeks we have been covering a number of different subjects on um, certain smaller less complex antennas and in particular um, the choke balan. And uh, this one produced a, a lot of interest and um, a, a lot of comment. And looking around and from what people are saying, uh, there are some very basic informations with regards to uh, chokes. So I decided to put something together um, with a, a great more detail in uh, its analysis and predictions. So um, in essence, I've produced a, a, an RF choke calculator that's based on RG213 uh, that is going to be available to all of my viewers and um, my uh, members of uh, the channel. Uh, and I'm going to produce for, in the members only area, one of these for various different types of coax. And what I wanted to do is this is a preview of what's going to be available. Um, it's not concluded yet. I've still got some other adjustments that I'm gonna uh, make to this. But I wanted to let you have a look at um, where we are first now, oh, sorry, where we are right now, and then give you an indication as to some of the complexities that are being considered in these calculations, so that you know then that when you um, wind an RF choke out of coax um, for your antenna in this method, then you may be just uh, better um, enabled to produce the desired effect that you want for any given um, frequency. Now whilst this is in Excel at the moment uh, my objective is, is to have this available on a website and there's a number of factors when you look at uh, calculators for chokes that you'll find pretty much anywhere they have really taken into in a lot of cases uh, a two-dimensional view of um, the coax specifications and the functions of the, uh, the, the choking of a coil. One of the problems that we have when we um, mix theory and real world is theory is limited often by the infinite number of variable possibilities that there are in the real world. So the more of those that we miss, the less likely we are to get the desired results in the world, real world. So what I'm doing here is applying some of those knowns um, that impact each other and some of those knowns within a choking environment do um, compound and influence one another at the same time. So just to give you a, a rundown here on what it's going to do so far, um, here uh, there's three variable options at the top. You have the, the frequency which uh, on here we can go to anything from uh, 0 to uh, 60 megahertz. Um, for 213 we can't effectively use that for a choke at uh, above 60 mega. 60 megahertz is the real limit. And this will go into detail as to why. Uh, we have the modes. This is just a, a, an entry. So if I were to go to um, 3.8 megahertz now, uh, you will see all of the specification changes. Uh, this is a pull down. So we have SSB, um, CW, and then FT8 for the various different duty cycles that there are. And then this is the ambient temperature. So if you're in an environment where it's around 20 degrees, which is the starting temperature, if you like, the heating effects that will result uh, as um, uh, due to the coiling effect of the coax will be counted within the calculations that are made uh, within these measurements. The next important factor is, is that the minimum 
um, coil or the, the, the fixed coil diameter is four inches. The minimum coil um, diameter for most versions of RG213, and of course there's a lot of them, is around three and a half uh, inches. So that's been in increased to avoid that minimum as much as possible. The material that's used in the dielectric when it heats, it distorts and goes out of shape and then you can end up with the, uh, the inner core starting to move away from uh, the center of the coax and then a, a compounding failure can occur from that. So there's a safety margin within that. But by the same token, one of the control and influences once we get to 60 megahertz is a, a coil size of four inches is starting to become a significant size in terms of frequency. Um, so all sorts of issues such as internal resonances um, start to um, occur. Right, so next set is uh, the uh, the temperature here. So we have a coil configuration factor, which we'll go into, um, a frequency factor, a skin effect factor, thermal factor, safety margin that's built in, uh, a, a mode factor, which is your FTA, S, SB and CW, and then a temperature factor. And just to give you an idea, just at the bottom one first on the temperature factor, it's one on one because um, at 20 degrees, we don't need to downrate the performance of uh, the choke. If I were to, uh, and, and up to 3.8 megahertz, it's not as, as big a problem as if it would be higher frequency. So if I were to go to say 40 degrees, um, you would see that the temperature factor has now changed to 0.85. And as a result, the, um, the, the power that uh, this would handle has dropped also. So back to 25, and you can see it's gone back up to sort of 2,100 watts or so whereas again at the 40 degrees it's down to the um, 1800 or so so where that would become more um, significant is if we were to go to say um, 30 megahertz on this um, sorry go to 30 megahertz and 30 degrees um, and then we were to change this up to 45 you can see the significance now whereas the temperature factor uh, is uh, coming into play but the other factors limiting factors within um, the coil uh, mean that the power rating has substantially dropped um, so if we were to add this even to 45 as I did just now then it's below 400 watts uh, it, it does change a little if you go down a bit further in 10 meter bands just a, a little but from the UK now of course we don't have a 400 watt limit so most people are um, able to go up to a, a kilowatt or so because these watts are cheap so it's an important consideration to take into account. The next things in the calculator which it shows is the number of turns that are required, um, uh, the frequency correction, the um, resulting impedance of the choke uh, and it will be displayed if that's not um, enough um, impedance within the, the turns for the frequency that you're on. Uh, an important measurement that I've put in here is the total length of coax required. So, you know, one of the pains for most people when they're winding a, wind a choke is how much coax you actually need, and you don't know until you wind it. So, at least if you know that you're going to have two meters of coax taken up in this 10 meter choke, um, then that's a, a, a great thing. Um, one final thing which is mentioned in here and it's in bold, is the spacing that's required within the turns, or between the turns. Um, again, we'll come into the theory in that when we present, or when I do the, the video to present this in its fullness, we'll go into these in a little bit more detail as to why. But you'll see as we change in frequency, and if I uh, put this up to 50 megahertz, that spacing requirement increases between the turns. Now, again, I, I try to produce or, or to uh, explain things as simply as possible, but the, the um, one of the reasons that this needs to be um, increased is with frequency things um, become much more intense, if you like. If you've got a tuning fork at low frequency, um, the transfer to the next tuning fork, the, the resonance or the oscillation, if you like, is very small. As you increase the frequency, it gets faster and faster. And it's the same um, with this as you go up in frequency. The heat buildup increases. There are other factors such as the skin effects, uh, which we'll cover, um, which 
the skin depth is much uh, greatly reduced. The RF sur or travels on the surface of the conductor plus a small amount underneath the area of the uh, of the conductor too. That decreases with frequency so there's a, a much higher um, concentration of um, uh, power that's traveling in a smaller area or smaller surface area for example. And then there's centrifugal uh, effects within uh, a choked coil as well. So what this one does here is this just gives a very brief and, and basic outline of the um, the functionalities and what these are taking into account. On here and on the RF distribution it goes into um, a great deal more detail um, and some of the compounding impacts are included in here. So one of the biggest um, issues for the limiting of power input um, and the operating of effects of the choke are the combined um, uh, the combined functions if you like of the centrifugal effect skin effect and proximity effect so just to cover some of those and this is quite um, a long list of what's going on um, and how it compensates and why uh, which uh, again as i say will be uh, um, uh, available and perhaps in a little bit more detail by that time once it's finished which i hope to get done over the next uh, week or so so centrifugal effects the RF um, current concentrates on the outer um, edges of the coil, as I mentioned earlier on, or was on the conductors. Um, and it's very similar, if you imagine if you had, uh, I used in the, the, the document which I'm going to show in a moment, uh, an example of a hose pipe with water if it's coiled, and that the that water would be uh, looking to, to work onto the outside edge. Well, it's a bit more like, or the easiest way to explain it is if you was in a water park, and you've got the the various um, the, the water running down the slides and the people sliding down the slide and as they get to the bends they tend to go up to go around the edge on the outer side and all of the water and their body goes up to those outer sides well if you imagine the turns of a coil and the RF is now biasing on the outer edges so what you have is a situation where you've got higher concentrations of um, RF on one side of the coil but less on the other and therefore that higher concentration is a similar or or this it has um, an effect as having higher power um, equally distributed and therefore because that's more concentrated the power rating of that particular piece of coax because of the combined effects of some um, such likes as heating the um, the dielectric to a, a much higher degree than what it uh, it would otherwise be effectively hot spots on the outsides of the coil then the degradings are occurring um, when you look at the skin effect as I mentioned earlier on if it, around 1.8 megahertz it's 48.7 uh, micrometers depth skin depth whereas on 50 megahertz it's 9.2 so it, it's like a 20 um, percent of the original um, skin depth that you would have on um, 160 meters and that has uh, a big info influence and the, the third one on here which is important because most ch or choke calculators don't account for the spacing that's needed between the turns and this is um, really from the proximity effect so the adjacent turns influence each other uh, and their current distribution um, the current crowds towards um, facing surfaces so for the same uh, way that you have the centrifugal effect on the outsides of the coil where the turns um, are adjacent to one another there's a pull in that direction as well and this is why so many um, aspects here are um, overlaying and compounding themselves so as i said here this goes into a, a great deal of detail into all of the various different aspects of this and one of the areas of how the issues accelerate once we get above 30 megahertz and earlier on once we go into the members um, area i will add some of the other choke variations westflex 103 lmr 400 uh, some of the messi and poloni coaxes uh, rg174 and so on so it's a very uh, fast and dirty session today but hopefully that was of use and we'll catch you on the next one